don't go. You just told me to. Not yet. I'll say nothing more, nothing to try and convince you. Then what do you want of me? Just a moment or two longer. my hand for a moment in yours. Just a moment more to hear your voice. To close my eyes and fancy we are on the terrace at Lavatia. The smell of the sea, an echo of laughter from the tennis courts where father and Olga are playing. You used to call me little one. Malinkaya. It was your own special name for me. You used it for no one else. <coughs> Are you ill? <coughs> no. Nothing serious. Oh, you have seen a doctor, a good one. Yes. It is kind of you to ask. But I am not, after all, surprised that you did not recognize me. I know I have changed very much. Let me go, please. I, I must go. What's strange is how little you have changed. You still seem to me as you did that day that my finger was pitched in your carriage door and you told me not to cry because there were people there and I was the daughter of the Tsar. Let me go. Look, it is still not quite straight, that finger. Can't you see the difference from the others? You are too clever for me. I do not know how you know all these things, but please, mademoiselle, I'm an old woman. I do not have the strength. Very well. Go if you must. We have met again. The only two left of our family. I shall come back. I will see you once again, mademoiselle, when, when my mind is clear. No. Perhaps you had better not come again. Kind to me now. You've softened toward me. But later you will get your balance. You will say, she's just some cheap little actress hired for money. It's true, Grandma. You did hire me for money. I was starving after I ran away from the asylum. I had nowhere to go. I even went down the steps to the canal. Perhaps I should not have let him stop me. Oh, goodbye, Mademoiselle. Goodbye, and dear, dear Grandmama. I will try not to be lonely or frightened. Frightened? Why did I say that? Where have I heard those words before? Oh, yes. Oh, I remember. It was on board the Standard. I, I had waked and found a storm raging outside, and the waves were crashing against the hull, and I cried out, Grandmama! And you came to my cabin. All the time. <laughs> I couldn't believe it at first. You came from so far away, and I waited and waited and waited. Don't cry. Don't say anything. You are warm. You are alive. What is your love? I can step on now. Can't you hear that really old heart of mine beating? I must go. But don't be afraid. I shall come back. I made you. <laughs> Let go of my dress. That is what you used to do as a child. Be sensible, Malankaya. Tomorrow, we will go, if you wish, to my palace in Finland. It is still there, and it is still mine. There is a very old man there, our lamplighter, and each evening, he goes from one room to another, lighting the empty lamps, so that for him, 
the rooms, the great dark rooms, are ablaze with light. The other servants take no notice. They, oh, he is childish. And perhaps that is true of us all. And we too are lighting dead lamps to illumine a life that is gone. Good night, Anastasia. And if it should not be you, don't ever tell me.